from me. Uh, over to you, Alice. Well, welcome everybody and thanks for coming along. Um, my name is Alice Maud Roxby and I'm the programme leader for BA Fine Art. And I'm here with my colleague, um, Georgia Clemson, who is our graduate academic assistant. Um, and what we're going to do today is we're going to look at some practices um, where artists recycle materials. And really what we're hoping to do is to inspire you also to go and make something after the talk. Um, so do take notes, put any questions you've got into the chat. Um, what we'll do is we'll pick up on questions at the end, um, but, but do put them in as you think of them. And um, certainly it's very nice that you're here. Uh, we're gonna be looking at um, a range of artists and we're gonna be talking about processes and ideas. Um, you'll, I hope you can see at the corner of your screen, I've, I've slotted in the names of the artists that we're talking about. Um, and I hope that maybe I inspire you to go and look them up and, and find out more. Um, so we're looking at a slide, which is, is um, for me, a really inspiring piece of work by Fishy and Vice uh, as an idea of what one could do through reusing, repurposing an object that's in the home to, re to make something new. Um, I guess with this theme of recycling, there's different ways of, of uh, addressing it. Um, for sure, the subject of um, ecology and sustainability is in our minds and we think about how do we reuse materials that we throw away to make art. And certainly we're gonna look at some practices that where artists do that. But I think we're also gonna look at um, how do subjects change? through reuse or three, through perhaps objects being brought into a dialogue that one wouldn't normally see them in. Um, and certainly that's true of these images that you see on screen at the minute, this very kind of playful sculptures of shoes um, by Fishy and Vice. If we were meeting in the art school, um, which I hope we will at some point, um, I'd be pointing you in the direction of many of our students' work because um, ultimately a fine art practice is, is, is very, very frequently recycling materials. And within the studios, what we find even is that someone might start pulling into the studio big pieces of cardboard or board that they found somewhere thrown away and making something. They might then throw, throw away the remainders and someone else might start working on them. And I guess the reasons for that are um, that, that it's, it's a cheap way also of, of trying things out, of not buying really expensive materials, but also a sense that there's something very creative about making something new out of something that someone else has, has thrown out. Um, here we're looking at a slide by um, two artists who've worked together for a considerably long time that they certainly since the 90s Sue Webster and Tim Noble have made works um, where they where they work together the pieces are authored by the two of them together and I think here it's kind of an inspiring way of seeing something incredibly intricate made from materials which um, are as you can see here bits of wood bits of, of um, I can see sort of smashed up bits that look like from old musical instruments even um, but the, but what they've done then is to make these sculptures and um, to light up the object with a strong light onto it so that the shadows are really shadows from the objects um, and so you can see all the things like the, if you look at the shadows, the tiny details of things like the hair are incredibly controlled and carefully made. Um, so within their practice, Sue Webster and Tim Noble have made works like the one I just showed you, which is, is with um, sort of thrown away bits of, um, wood or recycled uh, building materials, that kind of thing. Um, they've also made works where one could say they more explicitly have a message which is to do with our throwaway society. 
And um, as one can see here with the objects that they've made, they've used the same process to, to produce these shadows, um, but they've, they've gone with putting together the object out of um, uh, foods and uh, packaging from supermarkets. Here, here we're looking at some work which is actually by current students on BA Fine Art at Middlesex. It's work by Sunim Rai. And Sunim um, made these works whilst he was in lockdown with his family. So this was not um, in London. This was in, um, I think, Suffolk. Uh, he'd moved home and then he got caught up and he was actually, he couldn't leave. He, he was locked down there. Um, Sunim is, is a student whose parents are from Nepal and um, whilst he was there he looked for materials to work with and he, he realised that um, because his parents, his father is in the military and his experience has been one of, of endlessly moving from one location to another because of his father's work that he could creatively re-engage with the cardboard boxes which are um, removal boxes. So they're the boxes that uh, all of their possessions would have been packed up to move on to the next place. And what he did was to um, uh, draw with charcoal into these, um, uh, drawing on memories of having been a child in Nepal. So they're temples um, which he can just about remember and which he'd sort of looked into through looking at old photographs and so on. Um, but for me, there's a real pleasure in this, also with this thing of, of a household object, like a removals box, becoming an artwork. And these pieces have been successful. So they're just heading off for an exhibition um, to be shown at uh, Freeland, Freeland's Art Foundation. Um, here's work um, by Phila de Barlow. And I think the things that, the different ways that artists work with materials, um, are uh, variously bring attention to the physicality of matter. So um, with, we, we've moved from seeing people like um, Sue Webster and Tim Noble, where there's a very obvious motif that is being built out of those recycled materials to someone like Phila de Barlow, who I believe is, is responding much more um, sort of um, without, a, without that fixed image in mind in terms of how she responds to materials that are similarly surpluses from different industries, often textiles um, here with, with wooden structures as well. And, and the sensation of visiting a Phila de Barlow um, exhibition is quite often sort of multi-sensory in that as you walk around the space, which is filled with, with matter, um, it's also sort of sense of smell. It's a sense of um, very much a sense of a, I'm sure you're not allowed to touch these, but but bringing attention to touch um, and color and so on. Um, this is work by an artist who is very well known for video installations called Pipilotti Wrist, um, who also makes uh, installations where she's incorporating often light, colored light and objects um, and here then we see her working with um, thrown away plastic objects and using these again much like um, Webster and um, the, the earlier two images that I, that I showed you with strong light but this time to cast a shadow onto the walls um, so I think that there's something very creative that comes out of using plastic um, as, as a material for artists um, because of that kind of light and colour and sort of play with space that one can have. Um, this is another image from the same piece, but shown in a different architectural space. Um, so you sort of see this kind of stretching of image according to the, the, um, the curved space that it projects onto. Um, then a very different use of bottles, um, work by Lulu Quinn, where this is a very large object, but made from um, components that are thrown away uh, bottles. 
Um, and it became a piece where she actually set this bottle off to sea um, with lights inside it. Um, coming back to what can one do with objects that have a transparency to them. So we saw the work of Pipilotti wrist and those bottles with the shadows. Um, another way of working with that kind of matter is also through photograms. Um, so these are um, photographs made in a dark room, but without a negative. So before digital photography, I'm sure that, that you'll know um, artists, photographers worked with film. Um, you, many still do, but um, this, this actual process is, is a darkroom process, it's photogram, taking objects into a darkroom and then allowing light to go through it uh, and to project an image onto a piece of photo paper. Um, so it's another technique that certainly art students use um, and it's a really great way of learning about photography. Um, other things that I love around recycling and photography are the fact that um, one can make uh, what's called a pinhole camera, which is a very, very simple camera. It's, it's a camera that requires um, film, um, but basically it uses the same um, sort of technology as the earliest um, sorts of cameras or what, what were called camera obscura. Uh, ultimately, if you have a light, a, a space which is totally dark, but with a tiny hole that can be opened up. Um, so here you're seeing that in the Coke tin and you're seeing it in the camera obscura with the hole here. Um, light comes into the, um, into the in, inside if one put a piece of photo paper into the Coke can, an image will be recorded much like the camera obscura. Um, so I love the idea of, of making your own camera and you can make those from things also like shoe boxes and, and other any any sort of container that can be made to be totally light proof. Um, there's another sort of term which comes out of this notion of recycling which is um, appropriation. What appropriation means is a sort of taking of an image from an earlier artwork or um, an earlier form of visual and remaking that. Um, the reason I put this in, this piece by Stephen Pippin, is because he's remaking a very early photograph, which is a Mybridge photograph. Um, what he's done is to make all of these washing machines, so you're in a, a laundrette, he's made them into pinhole cameras. So what you can see is, is on the front, the, these, the what's normally glass has been blacked out and a tiny hole um, has been sort of, a tiny hole of light is allowed in for a fraction of a few seconds. Um, and uh, what he's done is to have someone actually ride past on a horse through this laundrette. And the washing machines are um, taking the images, so much like pinhole camera. And then um, he's used the, the areas where you would normally put soap and um, softener for, for the chemicals you need to process the the images so that um, the processing of a photograph has three stages developing with developer washing with water and fix where the, where the image is actually fixed um, and that's then happening in the washing machines and this is the kind of image that then comes out of that so within this one could say he's he's both kind of appropriating he's he's making a new version of something that was in existence, uh, or he's changing the meaning of something that was in existence, which is these, these images of horses and horses moving. Um, but he's making it through a process which uses very unconventional means, recycling a washing machine into a pinhole camera. Um, very, very different type of artist. This is Hugh Locke, um, who uh, became very well known for huge cardboard structures. Um, 
So sourcing cardboard from all over and then cutting into the cardboard um, and layering so that these are almost like architectural spaces you can walk into. Um, and um, in this way, bringing meaning to the work and the work of cutting different um, motifs. Um, so this, this piece was made um, during one of the our queen's coronations um, and um, but it cut into it our motifs also that come from for example mosques or temples um, so he's through this process of um, using recycled materials cardboard very sort of cheap way and lightweight way of building something really quite complicated um, he's also bringing together motifs that comment on how we read history and what is our cultural history and, and how different um, aspects of, of the, a multicultural society like the one that we live in can be brought together. Um, this is another Hulock body of work, which, which are pieces he's made um, uh, um, addressing statues and the kind of the histories of statues. And um, within these, what he's done is to take photographs of the statues and to then use um, materials sourced from all different kinds of um, sources from, you can see here chains, you can see bits of um, cut metal montaged onto the photo. So he's sort of recycling the statue to bring new meaning to it and to rewrite and, re and certainly question how cultural history is um, in our midst through, through these kind of um, these sculptures, um, public sculptures and uh, the various individuals who are um, uh, spoken of and put onto the map in terms of history. Now, again, this is a very different sort of take on what does it mean to recycle or use recycled objects. Um, what we're looking at here is the final installation of a very big project by an, an artist called Mark Dion. Um, and what he, what he did, what we're looking at is, is a huge cabinet that has two sides to it. So you can walk around and you can open it and you can pull out the drawers and look into it. And what it is, is a huge collection of objects that he and a team of helpers have um, sourced from the banks of the River Thames. So you see in these collections, um, contemporary objects like plastic bottles for sure, plastic objects, but you also see much more historic kind of thrown away items like sort of clay pipes and even bones. Um, so I guess the, the thing with using um, recycled materials um, for art is, is quite frequently, it's kind of bringing together several units of one thing to make something new with. Um, this is a piece by an artist called Michael Landy, um, who, um, again, this work speaks very much of recycling, but it's coming at it from a very, very different um, position than those works I've shown you till now. And what this was, was a piece um, that was called Breakdown. And it was, uh, it took place in 2001. And initially um, the artist made an inventory of everything he owned. Um, and he, he came up with a list of 7,000 items um, for, of everything from things like felt tip pens and socks through to TV and artworks. He was, was already a successful artist. And um, he took on a space, which was an old department store. It was a CNA um, on Oxford Street. So much like Primark today, that sort of space. And he filled it with the equipment needed for recycling so that he had a team of people um, taking apart the objects that made up his life's possessions. Um, and it was a piece that you could walk into as an audience. And it was, it was somehow very shocking 
and moving, but it was the kind of taking apart and recycling. Um, so, so the different people who were in uniforms were busily breaking things down into materials and sorting materials. Um, these are works which I think are quite poetic um, by an artist called David Hammonds, um, who is an American artist um, who's, who's made work and been known really since the 80s, probably even earlier since the 70s. Um, and I love the titles of these as well. So this piece is called Night Train and it's from 1989. And it's a piece that's made from bottles that he's picked up on the streets of New York, these glass bottles, and he's put them with coal. And I suppose that, that those two things one wouldn't normally think might go together, but, but the piece um, has a poetic, which, which speaks through its title of Night Train, He's talking about a sort of history also of um, engineering and trains and uh, uh, yeah, work, working on the trains and these sorts of things. Um, another piece from David Hammonds brings together paper bags, which he's picked up off the street, um, which kind of show the what what they've been used to hold so they're slightly greasy that they've had sort of different things in them and also what you see on here these little triangles the dark triangles are hair so he went round to different barber shops and he um brushed up the hair at the end of the day and he made pieces and this one is called bag lady in flight um, from 1990 Now, a very, very different sort of physicality and bringing together a process and object. Um, I've got some slides of the artist Alice Channa. Um, so these are very contemporary works. Um, and um, for her, she's using at times recycled materials like plastics, which have been come from the grinding down of, of um, uh, dustbins. Um, but she's also using materials like here we have um, crab shells that have, uh, so she's, she's made many pieces with crab shells and she puts them through a process, which is actually a process intended for components of cars. If you think of things like car headlights, where they're very shiny with uh, sprayed aluminium um, surface, and she's taken these crab shells and she's had them, them coated in the same process. So there's something very curious about them as objects. They are recycling of um, something, which, is, which are these shells, but they, in their recycling process, um, they're very sort of upscaled. Um, they become these kind of incredible glistening objects. Um, this, is, these, this is another way that she works also, which is, is um, using photography, stretching photographs and printing them onto fabric um, where the fabric is folded. So when you see them, they remind you of something, um, but you, what you're seeing is a sort of recycling of a straight photograph. Um, other works, I think photography is a great medium to use for the remaking of, of, of new pieces, the making of new pieces. And there's many artists who do that through montage. Um, like I say, I think the thing with recycling, if you're thinking you're gonna go and do something out of this, sometimes having two of the same thing becomes really playful. Um, so here there's a layering, a cut, uh, there are two photos that are the same portrait, um, but with a gap between um, so that uh, a cut and then one sees another photograph underneath where the eyes are showing through. And somehow this kind of reusing of, of photos speaks a lot about expectations that we have on photos or how we read photos. Um, very different artists, but Anne Collier um, also works with those kinds of ideas of often she's photographing objects and you, one could say there's a sort of recycling in that, but she's looking out through flea markets for objects 
and she's bringing them together as the subject of photos. Um, this piece, if you see it for real, it's a huge, huge photo. So you see um, these are LP covers um, that she's bought. She's looked out for more than one copy of the same LP. And then what one gets from looking at the image is, is very much a sense of touch because the two, one, one person may have kept the LP cover absolutely pristine and, and uh, the other may have, have things may, may have, light may have come on it, they, it may have faded, it may have become very sort of battered. Um, so another way of looking at it, at it I think, is, is that thing of, of bringing several of the same thing together. Um, and making something out of those components. Um, the artist Felix Gonzalez Torres made incredibly poetic works in that, in that vein, um, and quite often talking about relationships, um, so that this piece is, is two clocks where um, the, the clocks are set to exactly the same time. It sounds very simple and possibly dull, but actually there's, there's something very beautiful to it when you see it for real, because it feels like people, it feels like two hearts running at the same part, at the same beat, that kind of thing. Um, and other pieces he made, and he was living through um, the AIDS crisis uh, and, and many of his friends were sadly dying. Um, and these pieces with sweets he made from taking the weight of one of his friends and buying that weight in sweets. Then when you're in the gallery, you're, you're welcome to actually take the sweets away with you. So, so the piece um, disappears with time. But I guess, again, I think in terms of recycling and using things, I think there's, there's a lot that one can get out of. Um, thinking of an object that that is a is out of context within the gallery um, to speak of quite complex and quite important questions. Um, much of this kind of uh, question of how objects gain meaning or gain a sort of have a communicate a message a bit um, stems out of surrealism and out of um, uh, practices of, the, of uh, for example, you see Marcel Duchamp on the left and you see Merit Oppenheim on the right, where for the time, so Marcel Duchamp first made this piece in 1913, for the time it was seen as very radical to think um, how can a bicycle wheel be put in relationship to a kitchen stool? and seen as extremely provocative to the art world. Um, and similarly, Merit Oppenheim's piece, which is, is taking um, a cup and saucer and coating it in fur, which presumably she sourced from somewhere like from uh, secondhand or I'm sure, um, it, it, it changes obviously the reading of that domestic object but it also makes us aware of senses in that you um, instinctively, I think in looking at an object, you, you, the thing of something that should go into your mouth, like a cup and fur um, becomes a message. Uh, so I'm gonna click on Georgia to the task because I think what we could do is ask people to do the task in their own time. What do you think? Do, do you want to talk about that? Yeah, we can talk about that because it's something that you could do for yourself. Um, so anybody can um, sort of repurpose an object into an art object. Um, that's the thing about art is that it doesn't get judged on how much function it has or what it can be used for. It gets judged for different reasons. And so um, something that perhaps has lost its use in another way can gain a use in a different way. Um, so what we were, we were going to do <laughs> is um, we were going to uh, have you go away in groups, but um, there's no breakout room function on this, but I think it's still something you can 
think about um, is that you can go and choose an object that would be recycled or would be thrown away, something that has taken your interest in some way. If you look at things beyond their normal function, what is it that's interesting about these objects? Could they have some sort of texture or shape or a colour or something about their previous function? Perhaps it moves in a certain way or it was designed to do something and now it doesn't. And maybe something about this is interesting. And then um, you could even select a few objects and then um, you could sort of design a way that you can put these new objects together and you can, well, you can do it for real. You can um, find a way to combine them somehow. You can stick them together. You can find a way to cut them so they're slotting together. And through doing this, you get um, a new, a new object in some way. Um, and actually um, the object, the, the photo on this slide is um, from an artist called Erwin Worm. And um, so he did a work called um, uh, One Minute Sculptures where a person would um, receive instructions on what to do with a group of objects um, that they had and then um, that would be the result of it would be photographs so there's a big collection of photographs of people interacting with objects in sort of strange ways as you can see here got some office supplies um, being used in a very different way than they normally would hopefully um, and uh, there's plenty of others that you can find um, of people you know even just think normal things maybe like standing on a bucket or something like that just photographed and through this there's a whole work created from sort of day-to-day -day objects being remade into something else um shall i show the video alice i think that would be great so i'll stop sharing and um we can go over to you okay um, just to um, say to everybody while George is bringing the videos up is, is do put in any questions you might want to ask us into the chat and we're more than happy to, to answer at the end. Um, but yes, great Georgia, if you can share the video. Okay, um, so I'll just introduce, introduce it. So um, you might remember Alice talking about appropriation. Um, so um, as I was saying during the task, um, well, when I was talking about the task, um, sometimes in art we take things and repurpose them to become something else. And so this work is, is by an artist called Mark Leckie, um, and he works in many different ways, lots of, it has no sort of fixed mode of working, you know, he's not a painter, he's not a sculptor, he does a lot of things, it's interdisciplinary. Um, and um, so this is a video work he made called, um, it's called Fiorucci Made Me Hardcore. And um, it's basically a collection of found footage. So that means footage that has been, not been made by the artist, but was repurposed from archives or from other people's collections. And he's sort of mixed it together to create this new work. Um, and he talks about this work. It shows people dancing through time. So um, people dancing in sort of rave clubs in the 90s or people dancing in like the 50s and 60s at like, you can imagine sort of old fashioned kind of dancing. Um, and it sort of mixes this all together and um, creates a sense of nostalgia even if you weren't there you feel a sense of nostalgia because you um, you kind of it's kind of all on VHS tapes and really old style um, and Mark Leckie actually said that when people who do remember these sorts of things or were really there watch these videos it kind of rewrites their memory of it 
and then whenever they remember it they remember it as looking like it was on VHS tape because they sort of can't hold on to the real memory and it kind of becomes this exercise of replacing memories and nostalgia um, but I'm just going to play the video and hopefully it works. Um, I don't know whether to do full screen or not. I'll try it like this so that I can still see Alice. You can signal if something's not working. Um, but yeah, shall I play the whole thing or just... Are we on mute? I think, I think we could play it, Georgia. And just to say, if anyone puts questions in the chat, then we'll we'll make time, won't we, um, to answer those. That if if we do have some questions, then we won't show the whole film, um, but otherwise we can show it for as long as the time we've got. Okay, um, I'll go ahead and show it then, and then we'll come to questions.
I, I feel it, it's interesting maybe for us to to speak a little bit about the ways in which um, the film relates to this theme of recycling because I think it's an interesting choice and so I'd suggest people if, if you're interested in in the Mark Leckie to see it in full and, and do look it up George has given you the name you can take the name um, but the things that I, f I feel are, are really interesting in relation to what we do at university in fine art is, is that often um, students appropriate material um, and it might be that they take a soundtrack and put the soundtrack to new footage that they make or vice versa, or it might be that they take um, text that comes from somewhere um, and that might be the content also for a moving image piece through um, text being present that's appropriated, taken from somewhere else. I think that it's, it's really interesting um, in relation to kind of wider sense of what the, what the students do. Um, I don't know, I, I, I'm noticing no one's asking questions, which is fine, but do seriously, if anyone wants to ask something, do feel free to put it, put it in the chat. Um, I really hope you might go away and do that task that George has set, because I think you might be surprised by how something great comes out of using um, materials that you probably will find in your recycling bin or there might be things that you just um, you notice um, to look out for in charity shops or something like that. Um, but certainly for me, there's something that's not just um, to do with sustainability and ecology and saving the planet, which which I'm all for, of course, as well, but is also about a sort of long term um, sense of how artists use media and the kind of feeling that um, we might all feel that we set out to make something that's totally original and new, but inevitably histories are always sort of um, overlapping and um, uh, making something in response to an artist's work is also really exciting and interesting or making a new version of a piece. Um, so yeah, I wish you all the best and um, thanks for coming today. Um, and I hope, I hope some of this has been helpful and interesting. Lovely to see you all. Bye. Bye-bye.